Hello everyone and welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We're glad you're tuned in. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and the Dove Network. Thank you for hosting us on your station. In the Medford School District, we have one shared vision and that we believe that all are learning and learning is for all. And what better place to do that than right here on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Hi, my name is Ivan Olinghaus, and I am an electives teacher here at Hedrick Middle School. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about notation software. Uh, we're going to be using a program today called NoteFlight.com. Uh, NoteFlight allows you to take classical music uh, notation and use that as the programming language to create MIDI files and XML files, which allows you to create your own sheet music so you can write your own music, you can be your own composer, but you can also um, access other people's music that they've created because NoteFlight has a community aspect to it as well. Because of that community aspect, this lesson is really designed for sixth graders through 12th graders. Um, anybody who's under uh, 15 uh, has community aspect, so I recommend getting parent uh, permission uh, or having parent parental oversight um, as you're on these websites, because obviously you're in um, a web online community uh, for something like this. Though so this community is pretty fantastic, if I may so, say so myself. Um, for NoteFlight, um, to get to it, the very easiest way, um, go ahead and pull up a Google um, uh, web page, and we're going to do a quick search for it. And in here, we're going to hit our search bar, and we'll just type in Note Flight, and I'll put it in caps so you can see a little better, N-O-T-E-F-L-I-G-H-T. -E and it'll show up right there as the first option, uh, Note Flight Online Music Notation Software. We'll click right there. Um, as you come in here, there is a paid for version of this website, um, but it has a wonderful free side as well. We're going to use that free um, section of note flight today. I'll show you where the, the boundaries are between the free and the paid for as well as we go through this today. You can sign up for free if you haven't been here before and you can create an account. Um, real easy thing. If you have a Google account, um, you can sign up using that Google account. Uh, so as I go in here, I'll hit sign in in the upper right hand corner. I already have an account. And I'll just go sign in using Google. Um, that'll make it nice and easy. I am in. This right here is our home screen. Um, this it tells me that some of the scores that I've been working on. Uh, the free version of this program limits you to only 10 scores. Uh, right now I have here, it uh, looks like eight. If you run out of room, you can always come up here, edit list, click on that, and you can delete off ones that you don't need. You can also, uh, over here, you can see you can purchase sheet music on this website. Um, and then uh, you'll see it's got my trash can over here, deleted scores, uh, lots of different options in here. Um, up here is a create button, and this is where we're going to create a new score. So let's go ahead and click on create. And it says create a new score. Start from a blank score sheet. Or um, you want to start by importing XML or MIDI files. Um, XML files are a sheet music style uh, program. Um, it's, it's a file that has a classical sheet music. MIDI files, on the other hand, uh, come in a wide variety of forms, um, including um, like when you hear Mario Brothers, like that little tune in your head, do, 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 do. That's a MIDI file. It's these really simple, basic music files. They're, they're much smaller than MP3s. For today, let's just start from a blank score sheet. We'll hit OK there. All right. Here you have your first four bars that they give you. I'm going to throw in a title here. I'm just going to call this one, um, let's say uh, I'll call it Scales. And I'll take my caps lock, lock, lock off here. And I'll throw in here under my subtitle, I'll, I'll put major scales. You don't have to have a subtitle. Um, composer, sure. Um, I'll put my name there. I'll put my name on it, Mr. Olinghouse here. And if you have lyrics, you can add lyrics to this so you can write your own songs as well. Um, you can put in the lyricist name. You have your tempo right here. You can come in here, double click on that and edit it if you want. Um, you can also, uh, you have your staff here. This looks like a nice piano score. Um, we have the top line, the bottom line, the treble clef, the bass clef. Our time signature, we're in 4-4, four, four, so four quarter notes per um, measure. And the quarter note, the bottom four means that the quarter note is getting the beat. We have some whole rest to start with. If I want to start writing music, there's a couple ways I can do it. I can just click um, on a measure, and then you'll see it creates this little dot. And I can click again where I want that dot to show up. 
And then uh, I'll keep clicking here. Okay. And then I could also instead, um, I should say there's a couple of different ways that you can write in here. You can use a MIDI keyboard where you type um, uh, the, the notes in through like a little one octave, two octave piano. You have to buy those. They're usually about $100 for a used MIDI keyboard. They're really not necessary though. You don't have to have those. Something you can use though is I'm going to show you my keyboard instead. And my keyboard here, I'm literally going to type a few notes here. I'm going to type G, A, B, and C. Now I'm using a Mac right now. You can do this on a Chromebook. Um, you could do it on a PC. You can do it on any platform um, that uses a computer or Chromebook style. Um, and with that, um, we can now show you one more really cool thing. If you have a touchscreen Chromebook, I'm gonna show you one more really, really awesome method here that you can do. And that is when you see this little keyboard here in the upper right hand corner, there's a little keyboard, you click on that and it brings up what we call a piano roll. Um, so you got this piano keyboard that's sitting down here at the bottom. Um, there's two things you can do with this. You can click on a note to add it in. But if you have a touchscreen Chromebook, you can actually tap the screen on those keys and play your Chromebook like a piano and enter the notes that way. So this is just one of the many ways that you can enter notes in. Um, for today, I mostly like using my keyboard to enter these notes in. Um, now we have our first scale though. I can use the arrow keys to go back and forth on it. My left and right arrow keys. And I can hit the space bar and it will play from wherever the orange indicator is. So like wherever your orange note is, that's where the space bar will start playing from. And you'll see up here, things will change when it hits um, play. It goes into a, a, a performance mode. Great. Now I have this extra measure at the end. It automatically adds them in as I add notes. So I'm just gonna add a few more notes here. And you'll see as I get to the end of a measure, as I fill the end of a measure with notes, it actually creates a whole new measure automatically. Well, let's say I don't want that measure. Let's say I wanna get rid of it. You see this little gray bar that pops up above. I can click on that and I can hit this little minus sign and I can actually delete measures this way. So I can come up here, click on that gray area, hit the minus sign and it deletes the measures down. So P and space bar get you um, playing stuff. Let's say I wanted to have this in the next octave down though. I can click on a measure. I'm, see, I, if I click on a note, it highlights just a note. But if I click in the blank area behind a, a note, um, it highlights the whole measure. If I hold down shift on my keyboard and then click somewhere else, I can select a range of measures. And now that I've done that, I'm going to use control C or you could also um, copy. Um, you'll see if you go right click, you don't have that normal copy option. So you're going to want to use control C um, or command C if you're on a Mac and it will copy that. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom. Now, instead of having to retype this all, I'm just going to go control V as in victory and it will paste it all. But something's weird happening here. It pasted it in the bass clef, but in the same octave range as the treble clef. So when I play this, you won't really hear the difference. It'll sound like um, just um, uh, unison. There's not much of a difference, is there? So I'm going to go ahead and click this down here in my bass clef. I'm going to hit stop up here so I can go back into editing mode. And I click on this down here and I can use the arrow keys, the up and down arrow keys to lower this manually down. Um, and now when I play it, now I have my music in octaves. This is a really easy way to create harmony as well. Because if you take a note that you've copied somewhere, and you offset it by two notes, one way or the other, up or down. I'm gonna move it up two notes this, in this case. It's what we call it being a third away. So we've gone from C, D, E. I moved it from C to D to E. Now when I go ahead and play it, we're gonna have harmony. It's 
great way if you want to play with a sibling or with a friend online or something like that. Um, if you, you want to use one of the, the, the cool recording apps where you can record over the top of each other and do like almost like musical karaoke with each other. Um, this is a great way to write out the sheet music so that both of you can access it. Um, down here, I'm going to show you another trick. I'm going to highlight that bass clef. I'm going to move it back down. Remember how it was, whoops, I made a mistake. I'll go control Z to undo. Um, I'm going to bring it back down to where it's just an octave apart. And you remember how it would originally, we brought it all the way down from here. There's actually a shortcut. If you hold down control and push the down arrow, it'll drop at one octave for you. Um, likewise, you can also hold down, whoops, um, I believe is it shift? Yes, it's shift. If you hold down shift while pushing up and down, it'll move it chromatically in half steps. Because if you use just the up and down arrow key just by themselves, it'll move what we call diatonically. Um, diatonically means it's moving up and down using the same key signature that you have in place, which in this case is C major because there's no flats or sharps. All right. Now that we've created a scale, um, let's say we wanted to label this scale. Um, up here in the upper left-hand corner, there's three little lines, and I'm going to click on those, and I am going to come down here, and I'm going to find text. And there's a few different things. We can add performance text, lyrics, expression text, chord symbols, rehearsal letters, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, for right now, I'm just going to do some performance text, and it puts it in above our scale. And right there, I'm going to go C major and i'll leave it just like that now you see it's overlapping with the 20 the 120 beats per minute so i can grab that and i can move it around so now that that c major is in place I, I have my scale labeled let's say i wanted to label it with lyrics again i could come over to text over here um, but i also now you'll see i have as long as there's a little check mark next to text i can actually access text over here as well you see, I can click this little uh, more options and it'll expand it out. And here we can add in lyrics, the performance text, expression text, text, etc. Expression text allows you to add in dynamics. So let's say we wanted to make this forte to start. We just type a little F. What if we wanted to add lyrics mm. though? I'll go up here and, and go to lyrics, which is also control L or command L on a Mac. And let's say I want to type in the solfege for this. So I could go do, and then I hit space, and it automatically jumps over to the next note. Re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. A uh, common mistake, a lot of people put so with no L. It's just S-O. It's actually spelled S-O-L, like the sun. Now, what if you had um, a word that is more than one syllable? What would you do then? Well, I'm going to add in the lyrics. I'll go Control L or Command L on a Mac. And um, let's just say I'm going to type the word command because that happened to be the first word that popped in my head. So I'm going to add in the com because that's the first syllable. And then I'm going to use the dash, which is right next to the zero on your keyboard. Right next to the zero is a dash button. And I'm going to click that. And then I can put my second syllable. And then I could hit space. And you'll see now, when I hit that dash, it automatically jumped over to the next note, just like hitting space. And so this is how you can add in multi-syllables. Um, if you needed, let's say, to slur it, um, let's say we wanted to, um, oh, let's see, I'll put in the word command again, but I want the com of command to slur between these two notes and then the and to come over here. I could go com, dash, dash, and, uh, mand. There we go. And that will slur it. Now, what about adding the slur into our notes themselves? Well, I can click on the notes, hold down shift, and select a range of notes. And then I can come up here, and I could tie them together. Whoops. But a tie is not the same as a slur, is it? A tie is when we have two separate notes. So what if we need to slur? Well, hmm, I don't see it right now. Let's go look for it. If you can't find something, come over to the three little dashes over here and you can start looking through. 
So if we're looking for a slur, let's see where it might be. We have duration, hmm, rhythm, double dots, ties, incoming ties. I don't see it there. We have rhythm, tremolos, beams, slashes, appoggiaturas, um, different types of tuplets. Not there. We have pitch, so we can add sharps, flats, naturals, transpose. And you see why I'm doing this now, because I'm giving you a little tour of this. Um, all sorts of different options there. We have tempos, accelerandos, retardandos, fermatas, seizuras, breath marks. We have text, which we've already gone over, measures. We could go down there and look through that. We, have, we can change our clefts. We can change our time signatures, add more measures before or after where you are. You can change um, into tenor clef, alto clef for those of you who are viola players. Um, yes, that's in there as well. We have layout, repeats, dynamics, articulations, and there it is, slur, right? Hotkey is S. So I can add that slur in, and now we have a slur over our notes as well. Okay, let's go ahead and create a little more now. What if we wanted to make more than just a C major scale for just piano? Let's say we wanted to change our instrumental parts. So we come up here to parts. And you see where it says add part. We can click on that. And it gives us a few options. Now, the free version of this program does not have a whole lot of options. Bowed strings, we have double basses, violins, violas, and cellos. Plucked strings, things like guitars, um, electric basses. We have woodwind instruments, flutes, saxophones, but you see no berry sax, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, brass, very limited here, just trumpet and trombone, unpitched percussion, and yes, you can turn this into a drum machine, and keyboards. So the free version of this program, while it doesn't have everything you might need, uh, keep in mind, you're just really creating sheet music in this program. So that's where this one gets real handy. Okay. Let's go ahead and for right now, we'll add in a flute. We'll hit OK. And let's say we wanted to add in, um, how about a bowed string as well? Let's, let's throw in a cello. OK. Um, and we'll come through. Let's say we wanted to delete what we already had. We could come through there. We could delete that. And it, it deleted the entire piano part out as I highlighted that entire section. Instead of scales, let's do. Um, Let's call this a canon. And the cello part here, I'm going to add in a C, jump it up an octave, G, A, E, F, C, F, G. Okay, let's go back to the beginning here and we'll hear what that sounds like. Some of you might recognize that as being part of Pachelbel's canon. Okay. Um, I do want to change the tempo a little bit. It's much too fast. So I'm going to bring it back down to, how about about 80? And let's see if we like that tempo better. Mm, still kind of fast. Well, let's go ahead and turn these into half notes instead. That'd be one option. Or we could just have our tempo again. So we, instead of it being 80, we could bring it all the way down to, let's see if it'll go as low as 40. Sure enough, it sure did. There we are. We have a little bass line. Now, instead of having to write the cello part over and over and over again, we could copy and paste it, but there's another trick. If you go hit stop up here, that'll bring us back into editing mode. We'll go ahead and select those two measures. I'm holding down shift while I'm clicking and allows me to select um, adjacent items here. And I'm just gonna press R, R as in repeat not control R, anything like that, just plain old R. And it repeats the pattern. And I could repeat it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, etc. All right, so let's add in a flute part now. Um, let's see here. Let's make it eighth notes. Now for rhythm, rhythm's up here under duration. You see you can change the rests, but if we add in a note, 
bring it down to the low C, the flute's lowest note, if you, as long as you don't have a B foot attached. Let's change this to an eighth note. We could click on that after I've entered the pitch, and it'll change it to an eighth note. But there is a shortcut as well. So for shortcuts, we're going to use a lot of shortcuts in this program. It's a wonderful program. If you learn the hotkeys in it, you can actually type quite fast, um, almost as fast as you can play. But right now, I'm going to show you my keyboard again. And on the keyboard here, um, what I'm going to do is you'll see there's two bracket keys right here next to P, the left bracket and the right bracket. So far, we have an eighth note, which is what we want. But if we wanted a quarter note, I could press that right bracket. And what it does is it expands the rhythm out. It elongates the rhythm. It doubles it each time. As we press the left bracket, it's going to cut it in half. Um, so let me show you what's happening in the program as we're doing that. Um, inside of our program um, up here, you'll see that we are able to go to, I'm pressing the left bracket, and it's cutting things in half. If I press the right bracket, it doubles the length of the values. So we have whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, 32nd notes, 64th notes, 128th notes, and finally 256th notes. Well, don't try and write things in 256 notes. I, I strongly don't recommend that. Um, for just about anybody who's getting started with this, I would never go much beyond 16th notes. Um, 16th notes are a good small value to have. Um, in this case, I would like eighth notes, and I'm just going to put in some arpeggios. So I'm going to go C, E, G, C. Well, let's see if it works. I'm going to go here and hit P. Oh, no. I need my eighth notes to actually be 16th notes to make this work. That's okay. We can change them into 16th notes. So I'll come back here to stop. I'll click that bottom one and change it to a 16th note. I'll go C, E, G, C. There we go. There we, go. we have um, a little C major arpeggio. And then the next chord that I would like to do, looks like I want to build it off a G. So I'm going to take G. And the G then, if you want to um, create an arpeggio where you have this beautiful little chord-like sound, you take a note, skip a note, then take a note, skip a note. And so the G, we go G, skip the A, B, skip the C, D, and then for the fourth note of an arpeggio, if you want a major arpeggio or a minor arpeggio, um, the last one you want to do is the um, note that you started with, in this case, the G again. Okay. And then we could do the same thing for the A um, arpeggio, but we have, again, another way we can do this. I could hold down shift and select that range of notes, and I could press R, and then I could just move it over uh, up one note. See, we have a G here and an A here in the bass. So if I wanted to build an A minor arpeggio, all I have to do is move it up because we're in diatonic scale. I can hit R again, and I'm going to move it down to an E. Now, this isn't the best voice leading in the world, but I think it'll work. And so we can continue this pattern as we go along. We just repeat. We'll go build this one off F, repeat, build this one off C again, repeat, go back to F, and then repeat and go up to G. And le let's see what we have now. go. So we have a little bit of an, um, a canon. Now let's say we wanted to stack notes on top of each other within a single part. Let's say there's two flutes reading off this one flute line. So I could come in here, go back to editing mode, and let's say I wanted to start by playing an E, and then I'm just going to go make a little note pattern here. E, D, C, B, A, G, A, B. Okay. I think I'm going to like that. Let's start there. Let's see if we like it. So I'll hit P. Um, whoops. I get, I, I should hit a uh, space bar. Okay. Sounding pretty good. I like it so far. 
Go ahead. I'm going to take that flute part and I'm going to go ahead and repeat it. I'll grab that, hold down shift, and I'm going to repeat it one more time. But this time, I would like to add a few more notes above it. And all I have to do is click above it. Oh, I don't like that B right there. I'm going to make that a C. And let's see how this sounds now. So we'll come back here. Good. Let's add another instrument. I'll come over here, add a part, and I'm going to add plucked strings. I'm going to add in a guitar for this. That'll be kind of fun. And I think I'm also going to add in, hmm, let's do one other instrument. Let's do a viola. We'll go grab a viola here, hit OK. I really liked this first little um, arpeggio stuff that we had here. I'm going to put that into the guitar. I'm going to Control C, copy it, and I'll paste it. And then I'm going to repeat that. And now I can get rid of that in the flute part by highlighting those two measures, holding down Shift to do that, hitting Delete, and deletes them off. Now, as I come through here, um, I'm going to come down to my flute parts. And I think what I'd like to do is add that flute bit that I did earlier to my viola. Now let's have that start right down here. Only this time, I'm going to lower it by two pitches. I want my flute part to continue. So we'll repeat that again. And let's see, I want my guitar part to go a little bit longer too. Let's see what we have now. Now, there's uh, something else I should say. Um, we can go to page view here, and you can see it as a page view. There's also strip view, flow view, and perform view. So you have a few options here on how you want to look at things. So on that formatting here, um, or I'm sorry, uh, over here in the, in the view, I'm going to go to a strip view for right now, and let's see how this song turned out. Ooh, I like how that, that, that bit was working right there. Let's go back to the very beginning. So let's see. I'll click off of that. And I'll come back over to my view. Go to page view. I'm going to click on that very first measure. And I'll come back here and go to strip view. And let's hear it now. So, few options there. Last thing I want to show you is that you can save this. So you can go save, control S, we'll hit save, and that completes your project. So now you can go over to the O and go into my scores, and you will see your file right there under Canon. I hope this tutorial on NoteFlight has been helpful for you. I hope you get a chance to create some of your own music um, share it around, play it for others, see what they think. Uh, for everyone here at Medford Anywhere Learning TV, hope you have a good day. Thanks for tuning in to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Medford School District is a place where all are learning and learning is for all.